In this set of tutorials, we're going to take you through the basics of Subversion with Visual SVN Server and Tortoise SVN. Subversion, from here on in referred to as SVN, is a centralized version control system. That is, it's a tool that allows us to version control files and collaborate on files. SVN deployed with Visual SVN Server gives us the server environment within which to maintain our files. And we add to this a graphical user interface called Tortoise SVN, and this gives us the simplest and quickest way for individuals to collaborate on files and version control those files. So in a series of five tutorials, we're going to walk you through the core components and the installation of Visual SVN and Tortoise SVN. We're going to look at SVN import and the process of getting your files under version control with SVN in module two. We're going to look at the workflow and the process involved with checking out and committing your files to the SVN server as part of tutorial three. And in tutorial four, we're going to look at resolving conflicts when files collide or conflict and how to resolve those conflicts. And finally, in version five, we'll look at the concept of tags and branching as part of SVN file control and version control. So the three components we're going to look at over this series of five tutorials include one, SVN, which is the core component underlying both the server and the client applications. It's developed and released by the Apache Foundation and has been around for nearly 20 years now. Overlaying this, we have a server component called Visual SVN Server. This component allows us to manage graphically our server installation where we create our repositories, manage our users, and manage the files that are under control by SVN. The third component then is the client component, and we're going to be using something called Tortoise SVN. Tortoise SVN is a visual client that allows us to manage our files on our laptop, our desktop, and check or commit those files into the server and check out those files from the server and manage them locally on our machines. But it's important to remember that at the core of all of this is just subversion or SVN. We're just using Visual SVN Server and the Tortoise SVN client because they're the quickest and easiest way to use SVN and start learning about SVN. So why do we need all of this? What's the purpose of all of this SVN clients, server components? Well, the problem we're trying to solve with these tools is this. Firstly, the version control of files. It's a simple concept in its own right. It just means that we want to have a file that starts out as a first version, version one perhaps. We make changes to that file and we save a copy of that file as the second version, version two. If we want to go back to our original version, we just open the first version of the document. The second component to all of this then is the concept of collaboration. You know, as teams of people start to work on the same group or collection of files, we want to collaborate them, we want to share those files, we want to edit and update them and pass them between people in the team. And we can achieve this in a number of ways. We could either send the file around in emails as attachments or we could have them on a shared file system where many people have access to the same file. The concept though is that one or more people want to edit one or more versions of the same file. So the sorts of problems we're trying to resolve or avoid with a version control system like Subversion are as follows. We have the first version, version one of a file, and it's stored centrally for multiple people to access. I come along, I take a copy of version one, and I have that on my local file system so that I can edit, update, and modify that file. At the same time, you come along and you take a copy of version one 
from that central repository and you start updating and editing the file at the same time. But in this case, it's your instance, your local copy of the file. I then push my changes of my version one back into the central repository and we now have version two of that file in our central location. Then you come along and you've made changes to version one too and you push your changes back to the central repository where all the files are being shared to. The problem as you can see here is that your changes will now overwrite my changes and my changes will have been lost. So whilst the two concepts of version controlling files and collaborating on files are quite simple in their own right, once you start to scale up with more and more people, more and more files, more and more versions of those files, you end up with more and more conflicts and more and more issues. It's issues like these that SVN was designed to solve. However, being a command line tool, which SVN is, doesn't make SVN particularly easy to work with. So tools like Visual SVN Server and Tortoise SVN were developed to help people like you and me work with SVN. And it's working with SVN, Visual SVN Server and Tortoise SVN that we'll be looking at over the next five tutorials.